Hey, uh, in this new tutorial for Vue 9.5, um, we're going to show you how to export objects from Vue and also import objects into Vue. Um, this tutorial works for basically any version of Vue um, from 7 up, I believe. And it even might work for um, older versions, but I wasn't using Vue back then, so um, I've used Vue 7 a little bit. I use Vue 8 extensively, so I know this will for sure work in 8 and 8.5 and 9 and 9.5. So, um, anyways, let's go on with the tutorial here. So what I made was a um, a simple meta blob. I just combined a bunch of these uh, spheres into uh, a meta blob. And the way you do that is you just create some f spheres here. I'll just create you know, maybe one or two of them, or three, I guess. And after you get them lined up in the way you want them to look, you just uh, select them all right here, and then click on Meta Blob. And if you didn't know how to do that, well, now you do. Um, and then what you want to do next is apply your material. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that Meta Blob. And what I have here is just my tutorial or my uh, uh, basic uh, object with you know it kind of looks bad it looks like a either a person or something else but you can keep your imagination to yourself I guess and uh, you apply your material so let's go ahead and you know maybe we'll get rid of this material and use a different one let's use one that looks cool gray yeah that one looks pretty cool all right so now you've got your material here, you have your materials on it, uh, you have your object with your materials on it. What do you want to do next? Um, export it. So you want to click, what you want to do is make sure you have your um, object selected just to be safe. And go up to File, and you want to Export Object. And on the Export options here, um, you can choose which one you want to export it as. A lot of people use um, Cinema 40 and 3D Studio and View Extreme. Um, any extreme version of you would have these as options. Um, I believe other versions might, but uh, I know for sure extreme does. So uh, what you want to do is um, export it as whichever file you want. And it gives you the extensions here so you know which ones you're exporting it as. And then you can check these depending on what you need. If you need a bump map, go ahead and check that and you can save which kind of file you want to save it as. Uh, same thing with the alpha maps and the color maps. The next thing you want to do is name your file right here by typing in any na name. And then you want to browse to where you want to save it as. And make sure you choose what you want to save it as in here as well. Next, you can choose the resolution. Of course, the higher the resolution, the more quality, the lower the resolution, the less quality. Um, what you would like to do is just kind of find what you know you need. A lot of people might just go for high, just to get the, all the detail they want in there and then after that you click OK. When you click OK, Vue will export it and it does it pretty quickly. And as you can see here, you have the exported file and I can bring this into 3D Studio and um, do whatever I need for it in there. But I don't, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Next, what you want to do when you import is um, I'm going to delete that and when you want to import you can do it one of two ways um, or you can do it both ways whichever way makes you feel happy um, you can either import the object directly from wherever you have it saved on your computer if you do the import um, the import object op option right there it'll give you what the, it'll give you basically the the basic step windows gives you to find the the item and then open it um, but when you open it you get another window here the import options and here it gives you different options so you can decimate the object on import center object resize the object and down sample the object as well as maintain vertex order and the decimate object basically uh, if you have it set as um, like if you have a high resolution mesh you can actually decimate this to have less polygons or vertices um, make it import faster as well as look in the, um, load into the scene faster. Um, you usually would not check that unless you know you want to decimate it. Um, but I don't want to decimate it, so I'm not going to check that. You can either either and you can either have it centered inside the scene, 
or not, but you know, usually you're, when you import an object, you're going to place it to wherever you want it. So if you want it centered, go ahead and check that. If not, keep it unchecked. You can also resize the object. And um, the difference between resizing and decimating is this is just the size of the object, which you can size inside of you anyways, whereas decimate um, actually takes away quality and makes it so it'll load faster. If you want it want it to automatically resize, then you can do that. But if you know the actual size you want it to be, you can go ahead and change it by manually sizing it. Um, when you downsample texture maps, you're basically downsampling the texture maps. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then it gives you different options here on, on what to choose. And I'm not entirely sure what the maintain vertex order option is here. Um, if someone knows, they can go ahead and please fill me in. If not, I'll just Google it, I guess and um, kind of later on in another tutorial explain what it is and other than that um, usually I keep all these che unchecked everything on here unchecked I just click OK and then it loads in my object that I have and as for this object it's a giant navy boat so I'm just gonna zoom out here and there's my giant navy boat yeah it looks pretty awesome so um, whoever made this did a good job and they put a lot of detail into it. Kudos to them. I downloaded it off of, I downloaded it as a free object, free to use, everything like that off of um, ShareCG. So uh, it's a pretty good uh, model. I've used it in a lot of different things. So that's how you would import into view. Um, another way to import into view is by going to file and then load object. And view has its own objects you can load. Um, and mine are all empty because um, I actually didn't want any of the objects that view has. So, but I have my own models that I have here. And one of them is this uh, beacon. And this is another one I download for free. And I'm just gonna resize it so you can see it. It's it's kind of a small, smallish um, object. It wasn't meant to be really huge, but I'm going to resize it anyways. This one actually didn't come with any materials on it. And if I set this to be preview, and I'm going to render it to a screen. Now you can see that I have the object, both of them, anyways. Both of them are in here. And um, now I can place them wherever I want. So those are two ways you can do it. The first way I recommend doing if you... Uh, you know, you only need to load up one object, but I really like doing the option, just the load object option, because you can actually load in a collection, and you can also load them up faster because it'll give you an entire selection here, and you don't have to go and find it on your computer. And you can also do the shortcut key, which is Control L, and now you can load in another object just by hitting Control L and then choosing what you want, instead of having to go through your entire computer to find it. So that's also another cool way to do it. And whoever built this house also did an excellent job. It's a pretty nice detailed house here. And I'm going to do a quick render on that. Of course, the material on the top I think could be better. And also the siding. But, you know, this is a free object, so I'm not complaining. It was, they did a pretty good job, especially the front. I think they even have flowers. So. Yeah, I think they did a pretty good job. The door's kind of tiny, but whatever, it's a house. So that's how you would do it. And I do believe that if you import an object from 3D Max, it'll also be imported with the material you placed on it. If not, and if you used a custom material, you can definitely import that into view as well by... I'll show you. If you have a custom material that you want to import into view, one that you might have used in 3D Max and you want to be able to use in view, First off, what you want to do is load in your object. So pretend this is the object I want to load. Next, you want to double click on the material um, editor there. And then um, when you double click on here to choose your material, instead of uh, um, finding what you want in here, click on this yellow arrow right here. And this will let you open up a material file. So say on this sphere, I want to load up um, a texture which I actually have here and um, say I wanted it to be a JPEG 
and I believe you would let it work with a JPEG. Um, nope, I guess not. It has to be a .mat material. So if you don't have a material file, a .mat file, it probably won't work for you. So say that's the material I want to load. There we go. Now it worked. All right. So if you want to load the material, and if it's a .mat file, you can just load it by clicking this yellow arrow button and then finding it on your computer. Unfortunately, Vue doesn't load other objects or other material files like JPEGs or PNGs. It has to be a .mat file. You can also do the same thing by um, creating your own collection right here. So say you have a collection of um, different materials like this earthenware right here. Click OK. And now I have my earthenware collection on here because I didn't before. And in here it has the dot material files. So I can actually add, you know, the mountain one right here. Click OK. And now I have my mountain material on there. And so that's one way you can do it. There's two ways you can do it actually. I guess you have two options both ways. So just make sure that it's actually a dot mat file. And then you should be able to load it. And I do believe if you export it, um, it should export with the material on it. So uh, I three, do believe that 3D Max will allow .mat uh, files because I believe the same materials that they use in 3D Max are .mat files. But don't quote me on that. So I can export this. I can export the object, and I'll export it as. Um, you know what? We'll do this. We'll save the object, and we'll save it as a VOB file. So that's a view object file and we'll name it whatever and we'll put it on the desktop save that alright and right here you can just click OK and then you can delete that and then you can come to file import object and then you should have it right there open and it'll keep the material placement on it and that's how you can do it internally in view and I do believe that might work with 3D Max but those who are keen in 3D Max will say otherwise if I'm wrong if not then kudos to me so um, that's how you do it internally and externally in view if you have any other questions uh, about importing objects or exporting objects or importing materials or exporting materials um, definitely give me a holler and I'll definitely do it for you I'll either let you know via message or another tutorial if you'd like uh, before I go you can also do the same thing with uh, terrains. So if I'm going to create a terrain right here, make it really big, and then you can actually come into the procedural terrain right here. If you make a procedural terrain anyways, and then here you can um, you can actually set it as a, you can create what you want inside the function editor inside here, and then you can actually change it into a standard terrain and as a standard train you can export the train and here you have different options as well 3D Studio Export, Lightwave, um, Wavefront and I do believe they have um, Cinema 4D right there so you can export as a bunch of other file formats, picture formats and stuff like that so uh, that's one way you can do terrain so create a train and import it into 3D Max that's one way to do it uh, as standard terrains, you don't even have to convert it to anything. You just create your standard terrain, and um, you go into it, and you just export it the same way you would. And that's that. So yeah, if you have any other questions or concerns, or if this helped you, please just definitely just comment or like or subscribe. And I'll definitely try to make these a lot more informational in the future. Uh, thank you and have a good day.